So guys, a lot of you who have been here since a very long time know that I have been working on a 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch Retina model and that was a dual core machine. I had been editing all of these 4K crispy videos that you see almost on a regular basis. I have been editing those on that machine. That machine started to show its age as I upgraded my camera, as I upgraded the footage, as I upgraded the resolution that I was working in, the bitrate I was working in and within a span of time, it almost took me around 10 to 13 hours to complete any project despite using the best editing software in terms of speed which is Final Cut Pro X. So now I, I was in a dilemma whether to save my money further for anything else or maybe invest all of my savings and everything I had, every penny and maybe even sell my kidney. No, my kidney is still intact. My kidney is still intact. I didn't sell my kidney off. So I just decided to upgrade my machine. It was not a whim or anything. It was a big planned purchase. I had been saving money for a long time. And today in this video, I'm going to unbox and review the MacBook Pro 2018 15 inch model. So guys, let's begin. Firstly, this video is not meant for anybody who thinks that a MacBook is a very expensive purchase. It is an expensive purchase. Who thinks that MacBooks are not justified for the price? They are certainly not justified for the price. And anybody who thinks that the Apple ecosystem is trash, you are free to click away, bros. You are free to click away because uh, this is not the target audience that we are looking for. There are people who are very much in need of the Apple ecosystem and whose entire work uh, and everything revolves around that. So this video is meant for those guys. Should you upgrade to a 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch? This video is meant for you guys. So let me tell you all of the pros and cons of this product. First things first, what these guys have upgraded and I think that it's one of the best upgrade in the previous two generations is the bigger trackpad. It's so big that you just know how big it is. It's really big. It feels huge. It's quite big. So the trackpad is quite good. But one thing that has deteriorated in the recent MacBooks is the keyboard experience. The 2016 MacBook Pro had what we know as butterfly switches. This generation has the butterfly switches, but these are somewhat changed. There's a membrane beneath all of these switches and if you press really hard, the sound is not as clicky as the generation before. It's certainly a more quieter experience when compared to the previous generation. And if you are somebody who is used to typing on a regular keyboard, I can assure you it would take you around two to three weeks in order to adjust to this keyboard. I resumed typing on this keyboard fully and I got my previous speed back within a matter of few weeks. So it's not really that bad, but the key travel could have been much better. So that's my personal experience on this whole situation. Let's talk about the display. These guys make the best displays ever. And uh, this time around, this display also features True Tone and it's a Retina display, but I disabled the True Tone because I have to do extensive color correction work on all of my videos. And I would recommend you also do that in case you're somebody who works a lot on video and image files. Let's talk about the performance. I went for the 15 inch buffed out model with a better 6 core i7 processor, 512 gigs of storage, uh, 4 gigabytes of uh, Radeon graphics and everything. And I can, uh, I can say that the performance is really good. Uh, Final Cut Pro runs very smoothly over here. That's my main application of choice. I only run two applications on this whole system. Uh, this is a 2 lakh plus machine and still I only run two applications, Final Cut Pro and Chrome browser. So that's my whole usage pattern. And I can assure you that if you are somebody who edits a lot of files, you would find this handy that the overall performance is really good. The six cores, 12 threads make for really fast editing and all of the transitions, no matter what sort of color correction you apply, it would run really fast. It's better than a lot of other laptops out there. It's better than a lot of other iMac systems out there because of the six core and 12 thread advantage. It works even better than a lot of similar desktop counterparts, which you would get from Apple itself. So somehow the latest eight generation Intel Core chips used here work really great. As for the thermal throttling issues, I haven't encountered any of the same till now because I didn't go for the i9 model. I didn't have that much money to buy the i9 model. So I went for the i7 model and it works good enough according to my needs. 
With the 16 gigabytes of RAM, it works with almost any number of applications that you throw at it and it would very occasionally hang if you are on a very slow Wi-Fi or any other network. So some of the applications are network dependent. So always remember that don't blame the system, blame your network when it happens, as in when it happens. Now let's talk about the hardware changes. It comes with just 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports as expected from Apple, the previous laptops also had those. The 3.5mm jack is somehow still intact and I appreciate them for that because I can still use better quality earphones and headphones with this and I appreciate them for that but truly wireless is the future and most probably in the upcoming few generations we would see Apple products which don't have any ports whatsoever but that true wireless future is quite far even right now. And let's talk about few other things. I know MacBooks are not meant for gaming, but the gamer inside me could not resist. So I installed Steam on it and I played Counter-Strike Global Offensive on this laptop. You can play Counter-Strike Global Offensive on this laptop on maximum possible resolution for the display. And with everything pushed to the max, you would get around 30 FPS plus. But if you want a really stable experience, I got something around 1440 by 900 resolution. Everything pushed to the lowest. I got around 300 to 400 FPS, which was really respectable for a machine like this. It's still a laptop. Even with six cores and 12 threads, it's still a laptop. And those frame rates were really good enough for playing games for long hours. I played for some hours and then I stopped because I had to work and I deleted all of those applications pity me but still if you are somebody who's a gamer and maybe sometimes you want to give in to the temptation you can game on something like this it's not really that bad although a lot of games won't run on this one and your favorite titles like Grand Theft Auto etc GTA 5 they are not available for the Mac OS platform as of now but if you're really into gaming, you would definitely go for a Windows PC or some Windows gaming laptop and not buy a MacBook. The, these machines are see, definitely not meant for gaming. Throttling becomes really intense in them as soon as they heat up beyond a certain degree. Now let's talk about few other issues. The whole dongle thing. So if you are a productivity professional, you might want to run a lot of different things. You might want to have a SD card port and a lot of uh, different connections to maybe a monitor with the HDMI port and everything. So I figured out what would be the least cost involved in order to get this system running without spending a lot on dongles. So there's a USB 3 adapter by USB 3 type C to USB A adapter uh, by base basis. And I will link that in the description below. It's around uh, 500 to 1000 rupees. It's not really that expensive, but it will work with a lot of your gadgets. And honestly, it saved the day for me because what I do is connect that one and connect a normal 500, 600 rupees USB port to that. And I can use all of my keyboard, mouse and other accessories with the laptop in case I really want to game. And now let's talk about few other things. If you are somebody who wants to connect your display, you can buy an MHL cable, USB-C to HDMI cable. These cost around 1500 rupees and you won't have to invest in some other adapters or so. But if you are somebody who is looking into adapters, there is an Amazon Basics adapter at around 3000 to 4000 rupees. So these are all of the adapter options in case you want these. And then there are really good adapters at around 7,000 to 8,000 rupees which have all of your uh, needs covered. So those are the ones you should look out for in case you want a really better performance with just one single port connected. And now let's talk about the battery life. If you're somebody who's gonna use Chrome on this one, you won't get exceptionally good battery life. It would be good, but not exceptionally good. If you want that 10 to 12 hours clean battery life, always use a browser like Safari, which is optimized for Mac OS, and maybe not try to video edit while on the go on the battery. That would save a lot of battery. But otherwise, if you're somebody who wants to keep the device plugged in all of the time, you'd get quite good performance. Battery life would last around 7 to 8 hours on Chrome if you are not really watching a lot of videos and doing just normal casual browsing. If you are somebody like me who generally edits videos on the go, you can expect around 2 to 3 hours of video editing using Final Cut Pro X, not Premiere Pro, using Final Cut Pro X on this machine from 100% to around 10% battery charge. I would never recommend you to push your battery to the 0% mark that depletes it really badly. Overall, the aesthetics of the new MacBook Pro 2018 model are definitely quite good and uh, they are really 
when you pay so much money for a laptop, you expect a very premium design. And I can assure you that these uh, MacBooks have really that level of premium design which you don't see in a lot of Windows laptops, Lenovo laptops, HP laptops out there. Even the top of the line Asus ROG models don't look as good as the MacBook Pro. And if you keep in mind that these are very lightweight considering the amount of performance that they provide, that makes for a great experience. Even with the 15 inch model, it fits in nice in my bag and I don't have to really worry about carrying a heavy laptop around. And this is my primary work machine. I had to sell off my previous MacBook, my Windows laptop, a lot of my possessions and I didn't lease my home. Uh, I didn't lease my home. I, I could buy this with selling all of those in one year of savings. So if you're somebody who is deeply invested into Apple ecosystem, who wants the performance for an Apple machine, and if you're somebody who's not willing to build a Hackintosh and run into kernel panics and other issues, then maybe the new MacBook Pro models are for you. I can honestly not say that they are really worth it for the money. I still feel these are very overpriced products and Apple's being greedy in pricing them so high, especially in India, the prices are so high that you would be crying after looking at your wallet and after looking at your bank balance after buying something like this. But if you're somebody who can get a student discount from Apple stores, if you're somebody studying in a university, you might get them for some lucrative prices. And that's the end of the story. Within a month of buying the new MacBook Pro, I encountered a dead pixel issue on this and I made a collab video with Prince Chandra on this topic. You can check this video out on his channel. But this experience was really disappointing for me and I had to get my whole display panel replaced. You can check the whole experience out on that video. And the thing is that after this experience, I am even more reluctant to recommend a MacBook Pro or any Apple product to any user out there. So guys, this was it for this video. In case you like this video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. It's a small thumbs up button in gray color just down there. It's a vector file. You see, they use it for better compression and everything. And then there's a red subscribe button at the bottom on the right hand side. Just, just go there, oh, this small red subscribe button. 